Hockey hair is a big deal. The lettuce, the flow, whatever you want to call it. There's just something iconic and even majestic about the hairstyles that have become synonymous with hockey. Guy Lafleur skating down the ice, his hair blowing in the wind. Legends like Wayne Gretzky and Jeremy Yager go full business in the front, party in the back with their mullets. Even guys like Joe Thornton got drafted by the Bruins. He was a big gangly kid who had these huge blonde curly locks flowing out of his helmet. But what if you play hockey and your hair is different than everyone else's in the league? What if you're black? What if your hockey hair just so happens to be dreadlocks? Well, in this case, the answer is, it's complicated. And Anson Carter found this out firsthand back in 1997. During his second season with the Bruins, Anson wanted to change up his look. So he spent two hours, one game day afternoon at a salon in Dorchester, having a loctician separate each section of his hair into locks, applying beeswax to help it lock up fast and tight. I don't agree with that part. He didn't think it would be a big deal at the time or, at, or that there would be even any negative responses, but he didn't tell any of his coaches or teammates about it. This man actually tried to sneak into the locker room the night before anyone could notice. But of course, with his luck, he arrived at the exact same moment as his head coach, Pat Burns. Anson remembers that look that his coach gave him to this day. Big eyes, like a real life emoji. Then came his reaction, oh, you're definitely starting tonight. The fact that Anson Carter had to try to blend in with his other team members and try to like hide from the crowd during the national anthem, you know, it, it's kind of showing that he was a little bit disgraced of having to come out with a new hairstyle, but he successfully made it through that game and from there on he never looked back. This was his hair in pro hockey for the next 10 seasons. He wasn't using this hairstyle to stand out or to make a statement. He was literally just looking for a new style, nothing more. It's actually strange that at one point, Anson Carter was offered $10,000 by his teammates just to grow an afro. And this is where it all started out for him. It was easy money. And then his sister, Michelle, casually dropped his suggestions. Why don't you just twist your hair? You know, lock it up and see what really happens. It was that simple, except it couldn't be that simple, right? Because most things about being a black hockey player aren't. And no matter where you look in society, it's hard to ignore the reality that black hair is often seen as political. Maybe it's not always stated outright, but the subliminal messages are there. If you want to be respected or taken seriously or seen as professional, Traditional black hairstyles and natural hair aren't the way to go. And not to mention the added assumptions specifically for dreadlocks. You've all heard them. The idea that if anyone has locks, they're probably a criminal, a bad man, they're not very clean, they must smoke a ton of weed, maybe they sell weed. The stereotypes are in everyday society. But when you put these stereotypes in the context of hockey culture, where players are conditioned to fit in at all costs. His hair was definitely breaking the rules by standing out. During Anson's career, there were people in the NHL that thought locks couldn't be or shouldn't be an option for players in the NHL. As Anson Carter's locks grew longer, there was an example of this stigma where a high level member of the front office for his team at the time told him point blank, Carter, you should cut your hair. It doesn't look good. Now even though Anson was chirped by his teammates on the ice, there was also a situation with the New Jersey Devils where they instated this rule that no team players can have hair length past their shoulders. And there was a ton of players in the NHL with long hair, specifically white players who grew their hair long and had classic flow while playing for their, for their teams. But how do you interpret this higher up talking to Anson? It was code for how hockey players are supposed to look. And Anson Carter wasn't with that at all. 
So it was advice that he had no problem ignoring because he never forgot who he was, a black man playing the game of hockey. He had no doubt that a hockey player could look like a black man with a black hairstyle. And now this statement isn't anything he was trying to protest or defend. He was just stating a fact. And unfortunately, a lot of people still needed to learn this. At the end of the day, equality is really what this hair conversation is about. Black players and other players of color can only have an equal experience if they don't feel like they have to erase or censor part of their culture to fit in. And for Anton's career, for every negative interaction he had about his hair, there was about a thousand positive ones. Anson says it's a humbling feeling to meet a black hockey fan and learn that your hair helped them feel seen in a sport that hasn't always had their back. It's an indescribable honor when you hear a black parent say, we bought some of your old action figures where your locks are showing so our kids would feel comfortable growing out their hair. Other black players who have embraced cultural hairstyles, George Larocque, who started growing his locks around the same time as Anson, P.K. Subban, let his afro grow out, J.T. Brown got braids, and when Ryan Reeves showed off his fade, Matthew Joseph, now on the Senators, has rocked all these hairstyles, and Keandre Miller, part of the Rangers' young core, has embraced his natural texture for years. Whether these players have recognized it or not, they have changed a generation of new kids that can bring their authenticity to the game as people of color. The locks that we wear on our head may not be for everyone. You can like them or you can hate them. But don't for a second try to convince me that they don't belong in any of these games or that those who choose to wear them are somehow not what a hockey player is supposed to look like. And just remember that for 10 of 11 of Anson's NHL hockey seasons, he played with his dreadlocks flowing behind him unapologetically whenever he hit the ice. He was proud to give everything he had to this game. So if anyone's still wondering, yes, I'd say that makes it hockey hair.